Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to design steel connections in RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model. So let's begin. RAM connection can design connections for a variety of joints. During the connection design process, we will assign connections to the different joints using the RAM connection database of predefined connection templates which are separated into different connection families. As we start designing connections, we will select joints within the same connection family with similar forces so they can be designed together. For this video, we will be designing connections for the vertical braced frames that were analyzed and designed in RAM structural system. Now, let's turn our attention to the sample model in RAM connection. This steel building structure contains two braced frames, which I will now isolate in our view. Reviewing these braced frames, we will be designing gusset connections for the following types of joints that are present in this model. As you can see, we have some column beam brace joints. We have some continuous beam brace joints and we also have some column base plates that will require a gusset connection. Let's start our workflow by designing the column beam brace joint connections first. To start this process, let's go ahead and select the appropriate joints. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and use the Elements Selection icon. Here, I will find that I can select different types of joints based on their family and I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the column beam brace joints. Let's go ahead and select these joints and then start our connection design process. To do that, let's go ahead and select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar. Now what we're gonna notice is that the steel design code has already been selected for this particular model and we're using the AISC 360-16 LRFD specification and for this particular video, we're looking at standard braced frames and not considering seismic provisions. To start the connection design process, let's go ahead and click on the assign icon. Now all gusset connections are smart connections. So we're gonna notice that smart connections is selected by default. We're also gonna notice that our vertical bracing filter has already been set for us based on the types of joints we currently have selected. Now, looking at this dialog, I notice that there are several different ways I can detail the connections. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and select this option. This is a directly welded connection for a column beam brace joint. I'm gonna select this option and click on the assign button. After the connection design is complete, I can go ahead and take a look at the messages window. This will let me know if there were any errors or warnings that were encountered during my connection process. If you receive an error or a warning, this means that RAM connection was unable to assign a connection to a particular joint that you currently have selected. Typically that's because the connection template you selected is not compatible with one or more of the joints you have selected. Here I can see that total of eight connections have been assigned, which makes sense considering the layout of my braced frames. And I don't have any errors or warnings. In the data area, I can also see that the connection templates have been assigned to the appropriate joints. Let's go ahead now and switch our attention to our continuous beam brace joints. These are Chevron braces. To start that process, I'm going to go ahead and clear my selection. And then I'm going to select the chevron joints. To do that, I can return to the home tab in the ribbon toolbar and use my elements selection tool again. This time I'm selecting a continuous beam brace joint. Once my joints are selected, 
I'm going to click on the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Assign icon. Within the Connection Assignment dialog, I'm going to go ahead and select a type of chevron brace that would be appropriate for me. Here, let's go ahead and ensure the CVR option is selected. And then I'm going to select a CVR connection template. Let's click on the Assign icon. After the connection design is complete, I'm going to take a look in the Messages window. I can see that a total of six connections have been assigned, which is perfect because I actually have six chevron braces in this particular model. Now I can see that some errors were generated saying that the connection I chose was not compatible with that particular joint, but I know that connections were assigned to the joints I needed. So I'm assuming that my selection included other types of joints that were recognized by the program that were not compatible with the chevron connection template. So let's go ahead and move on. The last type of joint I'm going to take a look at is my column base plate joints that will require some gusset connections. So let's go ahead and clear my selection and click on the element selection tool again. This time I'm going to select all column base joints and this will select all the column base joints that are currently isolated in the view. And for this particular model, that means all the base plates that are going to require a gusset connection. When you're ready to assign your base plate, let's go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Assign icon. Here we're going to notice that the column base option is selected and by default, let's go ahead and select that gusset base plate. Once we're finished, let's go ahead and click on the Assign button and our connection assignment will proceed. Four connections were assigned, which is exactly what I was expecting, and no errors or warnings were produced. Now that we've assigned gusset connections to all of the joints within our vertical braced frames within this model, let's review the overall status of their connection design. To start that process, let's go ahead and select the entire model that's isolated in this view. To do that, let's click on the Home tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and the Select All Elements icon. We're going to notice that all of our connections are now selected for our two braced frames. To review the status of the connection design, I'm going to go to the View tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Status icon. Within the status icon, I'm going to use the pull down menu and ensure that the four controlling combination option is selected. Now reviewing the design status for each of my joints, I'm going to notice that the designs were completed OK for all of my braced frame joints. I know that because they are all in green and if I were to isolate the passing connection designs, I could click the green checkbox. If I wanted to see if there were any connections that were produced with errors, I can click the red X or also I can isolate any connections that produced warnings. I'm not seeing any of those in this particular model for my current selection. After you review the status of your connection design, you may also want to edit the detailing of each connection individually. Let's go ahead and do that through the connection pad. To access the connection pad, I'm going to select any connection within my model. I'm going to go ahead and for me zoom in on one of my column beam brace connections. To access the connection pad, go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. Now within the connection pad, there's a variety of pieces of information that you can go ahead and customize. And for gussets, we're typically going to take a look at your interfaces area. The way the gusset is attached to both column, the beam, and the braces are defined by its interfaces. Now taking a look at this connection design, I'm going to see if this is how I want to detail this connection. Now for me, for my detailing preferences, I'm going to go ahead and say that I would actually like to weld my vertical brace directly to my gusset instead of bolting it. 
So let's go ahead and access that information. Now this braced frame has an upper left brace. So I'm gonna to go to the upper left brace interface. Here you can see I can customize the gusset itself or also how the gusset attaches to each member. I'm gonna go ahead and select the gusset to brace connection and then scroll on down. Now for me, I want to again, weld this brace directly to this gusset. So for the connection type, instead of bolted, let's try a welded option. Now, whenever you change any parameter within the connection pad, you're gonna notice that the status of the connection is going to be immediately updated. Now the interaction ratio is still less than 1.0 after I made the modification, but now it's indicated in yellow, meaning that I did produce a warning during this connection design process. Now that being said, if I wanna review more information for that warning, let's go ahead and review the connection report. To access the connection report, click on the results icon at the top of the connection pad. This will bring up your steel connection results and you can notice that you can go ahead and jump to different areas within the report using the contents window. Let's go ahead and scroll down and find our warning. And here it is. Now here what we're gonna notice is that the weld that we provided from the brace to the gusset is larger than the maximum recommended value. So we're gonna zero in on that parameter. Before we exit out of the connection report, let's review any other results. Okay, so that is the only warning that we received. So let's go ahead and close out of the report and take a look. So here is where our problem is occurring. Our weld size is 5 16 and they're recommending a maximum of quarter inch weld. So let's go ahead and change this to 4 16 and right away I'm going to see that interaction ratio stays the same, but now it's in green, meaning no errors or warnings were encountered. Now before I exit out of the connection pad, I can also review the DXF drawing of this particular joint and make any further customizations that I might need. For this example, let's go ahead and say that we are satisfied with our changes. Click on the save icon, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the connection pad. Since I saved this, the next time I go into the connection pad for that particular joint, we'll have all of my customizations. In addition to that, let's go ahead and take a look at one of our Chevron gussets. I'm gonna highlight this connection design, click on the edit icon, and again, I can edit each of the interfaces to control the customization. Finally, if you wanted to, you can also take a look at any of your base plates. Here's a gusset base plate I've selected. Go back to the design tab and click on the edit icon. So here I can see the base plate information has been provided. And again, I can customize the interfaces and review the report. At this point, this concludes my process for assigning gusset connections to the vertical braced frames in RAM connection for an analyzed and designed RAM structural system model.